Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Chellen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Kerwin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 141, Multiplication Factors Based on Goals Met. All right, today's question sent in from Gareth at uh, YouTube. Uh, three categories. So, for example, category one, if I scored zero goals against that, I get a multiplication factor of 0 0.5, one goal, multi multi multiplication factor of 1, uh, two goals, multiplication factor of 2. And there's two other categories, but with different multiplication factors. All right, so I imagine it's something like this. Category 1, and this is the one he spelled out, if you uh, meet two goals, uh, multiplication factor of 2, one goal, one, zero goals, 0 0.5. So I created two more tables for category 2, number of goals, different multiplication factors, category 3, number of goals, different multiplication factors. And then, you know, so he has a table of scores that fall into different categories, but how do I put that into a formula? All right, so, you know, maybe we have people over here. It's like some sort of an employee review system uh, and so on, and people meet various goals or don't meet goals. Uh, and how do we score that? All right, so I suppose we could go really, really fancy, but uh, the way I see it, we have uh, three factors that we're going to multiply uh, by each other, and I can just do that in a single formula here. Uh, so equal VLOOKUP of category 1 in this table, the green table over here, comma 2, because I want the second column, and uh, to simplify it, I change the false to a 0. False and 0 are the same. Uh, VLOOKUP of the second category, this 5 here in C12, uh, into this table, the brown table, comma 2, comma 0, and then times D12. Uh, the red table, comma, 2, comma, 0, and we copy that down, it does the multiplication, and we can probably stack rank these employees based on the number of goals met. Just kind of old school, uh, three different VLOOKUPs, multiply the VLOOKUPs, uh, nothing fancy here. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Hey, uh, I don't really know a different way besides doing three lookup functions. I don't know how to like do some array formula, look up those three things all at once. So the only thing I can think of to do is switch the lookup function. Same three tables, same everything. Um, I'm going to notice that since these are goals, we're probably always starting at smallest and going to biggest. And the tables all seem to be taller than they are wider. That means I can use the lookup function, not v lookup. Lookup only does approximate match. What? Well, that's why this needs to be sorted. It also only does VLOOKUP when the table is the same size or taller than it is wide. So I'm going to look up this, comma, and then the lookup vector. Actually, this is the array down here. I'm simply going to highlight the table. And lookup always takes from the last column. So you don't need to put a column number. I'll hit F4. And then I'll times. Look up the next one within this table, F4, close parentheses. Don't need to put a column number. It always gets takes from the last column. And then look up this last number right here, comma, within this third table, F4, close parentheses. So three lookups instead of three V lookups. And then uh, copy it down. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Oh, Mike, come on, come on. You know, a lot of us were dreaming that you were going to knock out some sort of sum product with a lookup of the array of three different lookup values into three different lookup tables and control shift super enter and it would all happen. But of course, that just uh, is fiction. That would never work. So, oh man, Mr. Excel, that's quite a graphic. And now I am feeling down. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't know how to do that to three different tables like that. If we were to do this lookup, you can look up three different values. So the lookup array right here, the second incarnation of lookup, you can give it three values, right? It's expecting one value. We give it three, so that means lookup will spit out three values. But the table has to be one table. So I think the original question said three different categories, right? So F4, close parentheses, if we highlight this in F9, you'll see that it spits out three different values. And then if we're multiplying them, we put inside the product function. This will require Control-Shift-Enter because product 
That number argument there is not programmed to do array calculations without control shift enter. So there, it looked up three values and multiplied them, but they all came from the same table. Maybe someone else knows a formula for this particular example that would be more efficient than three different lookups uh, or VLOOKUPs. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. OK, so Mike, let me test some understanding. Let's say we just have some function, equal function that's expecting two values, expecting a and b. Is it true to say that if that function would accept an array, that it would be possible to put an array for either a or for b, for example, a three uh, position or three three cell range here or a three cell range here and force us to pop out three answers. But it would be impossible to ever pass a three value array for A and also a three value array for B because, well, frankly, the function just wouldn't know what to do. Does it um, use this item with this item, this item with that item, and the three with the three, or does it produce nine results? Um, and so the question for you uh, as the author of Control Shift Enter is, is, is it generally true that if we have a function that accepts some number of arguments, you might be lucky enough to be able to, to put an array in in place of one of those arguments, but never would you be able to put an array in for two, three, or four of those arguments where it's expecting a single value. And while I was in uh, driving back from Pennsylvania today, I started to think about uh, this graphic that I put up this morning and said, okay, even if uh, Excel would never be able to do this, we could certainly write a function in VBA that would be able to do that, where we pass the three values, B, C, and D, uh, and then table one, table two, table three, here's the code uh, that I have for that, Alt F11. Uh, so not efficient code at all, certainly, but uh, you know, um, it works. It actually goes through and uh, programmed exactly kind of what I, I dreamt uh, up overnight. With I was being facetious this morning when I said it, because I knew it would never work. Um, but actually, with some VBA, it would work. Uh, inter interesting, though, to figure out if it's generally true that uh, you have a, just any Excel function that's going to accept an array in place of a single value, you at best will be able to put it into one of the arguments and not two, three, or four of the arguments. Yeah, this is a great concept to have. Although, you know, the truth about Excel, as we all know, is if we say, yeah, this probably doesn't happen, then of course it will somewhere. Most of the time this is good. So for example, if you come up here and highlight that whole lookup, that argument expects one value, we give it multiple values. So when we evaluate it, it spits out multiple values, F9. That's the definition of a function argument array operation. That function argument is expecting single value. We give it three, so lookup will spit out three values. If we were trying to apply this right here to our lookup formula, right, that hypothetical thing. So we say, hey, lookup, look up those three values. And then we try to give it three different tables inside of parentheses. You know, it has no idea what to do with that. However, there probably are some examples of a function that can take two arrays. Now, arrays could be actual just multiple values you give it, or an array operation that spits out multiple values. An example of a function that could take two would be the sum ifs. So here we have our criteria range. We gave it for we gave it the blue column to add. Our orange criteria range is a region. And then there, for criteria 1, we gave it two values. And then we did the same thing for criteria range 2. We gave it all the sales rep. And then we gave it two here. So when we highlight the sum ifs, we gave it two in each of the criteria arguments. So when I hit F9, it spits out two. It's not going to spit out four. It'll spit out two. Now, in this particular circumstance, we would just, if we had a database, use D sum, right? and criteria. It's actually and and or. It's Joe and West or Mo and East. Uh, so obviously we use D sum, but you could imagine a different situation where you can't where D sum is hard to use 
when you want to copy the formula. So here's an example with a third uh, criteria, this product here. So we're still using the criteria from up here where we're given a function argument array operation right there. If we were to highlight the sum ifs boop, and hit the F9, it's spitting out two values. Ooh, it's giving us a two, yeah, a two and a zero because it's this, so Joe West and product two, or Mo East and product two, so a two and a zero. So if we wanted to copy it down with this criteria, then some ifs might be the trick. Now, if we think about this, if it's uh, we're given multiple arguments in a function, multiple items, there is a way to do that for some functions. So for example, the large function, small function, frequency, rank, percentile, all these functions in the array argument, you can actually give it multiple ranges. Now this, you know, it's I guess it is an array of, of items. We're giving it two different uh, tables here. You can see, but by putting them inside a parentheses, it's just going to take all of these as one group of numbers, and then we'll make an array function, function argument array operation in the K. Say, hey, give me the first and second biggest from these two. If you look through the values, it better be 7 and 9. So far, I would highlight the large, because that argument right there has two out items, F9. This, the large will spit out two items. Now, actually, I've been meaning to do a video on which functions can accept multiple ranges inside of percentage per parentheses. And I have a video queued up, but I'm quite busy. I'll have to do it sometime soon, because it's a pretty exciting topic. You know, we try to do that as we originally proposed, and that just is not going to work. So all right, to throw it back to Mr. Excel. Well, if there's anyone still here 12 and a half minutes in, you're saying this took a long time. But hey, for Mike and I, this took over 15 hours, seven parts back and forth. Uh, when I started out this morning, I said, this is a pretty easy question. There's no way that this is going to uh, go on for a long time. But it was one of our longest duels, uh, long and winding, hopefully interesting to you, at least if you're still here. So I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.